This piece is called Recognition. There once lived a woman who stole a child, telling him that his mother, who was her sister, was dead. They traveled together to a new country, and she raised the boy in an attic apartment not far from the city center, with strong wooden beams, a bedroom for each of them, a sitting room, and a small kitchen that looked out on the street below. As the child grew, whenever he would ask about his mother, the woman would tell the story of his mother's imprisonment for treason and of her eventual sentence to death. She would explain that that was why they had needed to cross the border, to start over in a new city, to change their names and to learn a new language. There is nothing left for us in the old country, Marion would say. The tale she told the boy was both true and false. It was true that her sister Anna had been arrested during a protest against the government. But Anna was not dead. And in fact, she believed that the state had taken custody of her son while she was detained. Marion was enraged that her sister, who, she thought, had always had the best of everything, who had been outspoken, but nevertheless had been the apple of their father's eye, who had had an affair with a married man that had resulted in the boy's conception and seemed to think nothing of it, and who had put her political beliefs before this child that Anna expected life to go on as it had. Sending letters as instructed to, by Marion to a post box, Anna wrote regularly to her sister, who claimed to be working with a lawyer to get the boy back to her. Anna, who was grateful for her sister's help, did not suspect what Marion had done. In fact, to Anna, their correspondence had a novel air of solidarity as Marion wrote optimistically about the legal process, asking Anna to send money whenever she could so that the lawyer could persist. Over time, the boy grew to be a young man, and while Marion's explanation did not satisfy Daniel, believing his aunt to have suffered enough, already he kept his grief private. Secretly, it became his ambition to understand his own history. Meanwhile, Anna lost hope of finding her child. She began to struggle with her memory, and she wrote to Marion about her fear that she would succumb to dementia, as their father had before he was an old man, adding, The doctors say that the trauma I've, I have endured might compound my symptoms. Marion, recognizing her good fortune, wrote to her sister less and less, until a few years had gone by since they had last communicated. When the time came, Ma Daniel matriculated at a university in another city. Although he did not tell his aunt this, he focused his studies on the history of his native country, that he might salvage some part of himself that had been lost. To Marianne, the apartment felt empty, but she satisfied herself that Daniel would return to her in the intercessions. One day, Marion had business in the city, so she stopped in the post office to check her box. Indeed, there was a pale blue envelope with a postmark from the old country. It was not addressed in her sister's handwriting with its familiar curling Ys and untidy slant, but rather in capital letters as straight as if they had been written along a ruler's edge. Marion tore open the letter and read, Aunt, for my course, I was asked to research an example of civil unrest. I decided to investigate my mother's case to see if I could satisfy my curiosity about her. I have been to the old country. I have found her alive. She can no longer speak, nor can she recognize those who used to be familiar to her. To have found her and lost her in the same day is more than I can bear. I am returning to you so that we might share our grief. Daniel. The letter filled Marion with fear at first, but as she hurried along the street towards her neighborhood, she felt glee at the news about her sister's condition. It seemed to her that while Daniel had learned much, he still knew nothing. 
climbing the stairs to the apartment, Marion crafted responses to the questions she imagined he would ask. Marion entered the apartment, put her keys and parcels on the small kitchen table, and turned to the archway into the sitting room. There sat Daniel, elbows on his knees, head in his hands. A gun lay on the coffee table, so incongruous that at first she did not recognize it for what it was. But when he raised his eyes to meet her gaze, she knew. Thank you.